What is the issue that you're having with the copter? So it has really bad vibrations. Really bad and, vibrations. Yeah, and I can't seem to tune it out. I don't know if that's just my lack of skill in tuning or I've got something kind of hidden going right. on. Right. Yeah. So then, and you see the vibrations in the FPV camera. Correct. And so the first thing we can check is the FPV camera doesn't appear to be loose, nor does the lens appear to be loose. Right. A lot of times the and there, lens... There, there was one of the screws was stripped out on the body there, but right. it, uh, it seems to be no, it's, tight it's, enough. It's not. Yeah. Even just friction on this for this particular frame, which is, this is a QAVR right. RS2205, 2300 kV motors, uh, and King Kong 5045 right. bullnose props. Yeah. But um, even just friction on this frame will hold the camera pretty well in place, and you can see that it is. Yeah. Now, one thing I do notice is, so this standoff here is not snug down, but it doesn't appear to be loose. It's just not screwed all the way in, so that's fine. I thought maybe it was broken, but I'm pushing on it with my finger and it's not nice. going anywhere, so that's it. And you see the vibration in the camera. Mm -hmm. So this is not a case, if, if you had a broken standoff, then you would be getting the effects of vibration in your motors and your PID, PID control and your tuning but you might not necessarily see it in the camera. So the fact that we're seeing it in the camera means that it's probably really there. So the first thing we should do is we should take the props off and we should do a motor vibration test and see if your motors are, if you have maybe a damaged motor. Okay. So let's, do you have your have tools do. with you? I do. Yeah, go ahead and get them and we'll, we'll do that. All right, so then we're gonna go to the motors tab. We're gonna need a battery, so sorry, run you. Uh, back out again. I do in fact, I do in fact have the props off for real this time. <laughs> Oftentimes I'll just use a smoke stopper. Um, we're going to go ahead and plug in the battery. I'm, I'm guilty of throwing a towel over. Yeah. With the smoke stopper they won't spin very fast. But so it'll still give you a start when they start going thunk thunk thunk. If anything's in the way they'll hit it and they'll stop because the voltage will drop. Mm -hmm. As soon as current rises, the voltage drops through the smoke stopper. Um, but it'll still give you a start and knock stuff over on your desk, <laughs> as one of my videos famously showed. So then to do this, I'm going to reset the accelerometer. They're all going to zero out, you see? And then I'm going to spin one motor at a time and I'm going to look at the results. So let's do that. Okay, and the numbers I get here are zero, 0, 0.01, and zero, and that's great. I think that anything less than about 0.03 is consistent with like a brand new, clean from the factory motor. Yeah. Um, anything higher than that could could indicate a problem. I've flown, I had, when I had my old RS, R, 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 RCX motors, I th th they were so beat up by the time I got rid of them. They were over, over 1G, 1.0 with the props off, which is terrible. <laughs> I was able to get a flyable you can, tune. You can still tune it out of that? Well, I, it, was the, it was extremely difficult, yeah. and I was constantly chasing the tune, and I would not wish that on anybody. But I'm so, so there is, what I'm getting at is, there isn't really a hard line where you say, this is too bad, it cannot be flown. But the more vibration your motors have, the harder it is gonna be for you to tune it. Sure. And if you're an average tuner, as opposed to an exceptional tuner, it, you may find it impossible to tune out. Um, and even for me, I, I could, but it was such a hassle that I it was... It's not worth the yeah, 20 bucks. So. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so that one's fine. That's okay. the bottom line. So now I'm going to reset again. I hardly need to reset. That one didn't really do much. And I'm going to raise it again. Again, looking good. I am not leaving it at max for very long. With the props off, uh, what do you see of these? As uh, the XM28. So the F390, so you're okay there. But even still, with the props off, the motor RPM may be high enough that you, you get, especially on an F330 ESC, but even still maybe on an F390 or a Beale Heli S, that you can get a sync issue or you can hit the rev limiter. Okay. If, you, if you go to max and you hear the motor going tick, 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 then you definitely want to back off. And so I'm uh, we're probably okay, but I'm not leaving it at max very long. That one's fine. That one's fine. And mostly what we're looking for here is... And that that one sounded different. That one did sound different and it's a little worse. 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.06. So what I was about to say is, 
what we're mostly looking for is one motor that's substantially worse than the others. Now that one is not so bad that I would say that it needs to be tossed, but it is notable that it's substantially worse than the others. Okay. So we would keep an eye on well, this also, motor. You'll this notice too, that's also the one motor. that's got one more brass uh, show in there, so yeah. that may have taken a hit. So 0 0.03 but below is great, yep. 0 0.1 and below is probably not even worth thinking about. And somewhere between 0.1 and certainly 1.0, you get to the point where it's, yep. it's you can need, and it's definitely not 1.0. If you're reading 1.0, you should probably scrap the motor. But if you're a real stickler, you might get away with not scrapping it. So the bottom line is these motors are fine. So then, then we can think about your props, right? Uh, yeah, and I've, I've tried different sets, same style, but it came from different batches, different colors, right. so same, same thing, same these result. These may not be particularly well-balanced props, perhaps. Right. We could certainly try a different set of props. Um, we could try a props on motor test with somebody holding it down and letting it spin. It's a little hair-raising. Um, and we can try to fly it. We can just look at what we're seeing. Uh, one thing I think that might be nice to do is we put a high def cam on and uh, we can see if we see the vibrations in the high def cam and the FPV cam. So maybe that would be one of the easiest things to do. Okay. So let's go, let's go ahead and try that. Why don't right. you put the props back on and I will go get, um, my, uh, do you have a high def cam you run on that? Uh, not with me. Okay. I'll go get, I'll go get one. Mm, there's the E it's being used. We'll figure something out. Okay. So I want you to watch the FPV feed first and then the high def feed. Go back and rewind if you need to. You'll see immediately oscillations, vibrations, whatever you want to call them, start coming out, even at mid or low throttle. Give David a little slack on his flying here. He's never flown at my house before, so he's being very conservative. He doesn't want to crash his copter while I'm troubleshooting. There's some vibrations there. You can see that they're less prominent in the high def camera, and we'll talk about why that might be going forward. I asked David to do some high throttle uh, maneuvers, higher throttle maneuvers, and you can see that the vibrations become much more pronounced at higher throttle. One of them is going to be coming up here in just a second. Here it comes. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Now right here, there, that's just prop wash oscillation. That's a tuning issue. But uh, let's talk about the other things that we're seeing. Okay, so you definitely did have vibration, um, and I definitely think it's the props. Okay. And I'll tell you why I think it's the props. Um, the vibration, if it was if it was p-term oscillations, then there would be a kind of regularity to the frequency. Yep. P-term oscillations are usually at a fixed frequency. That's a mechanical. Uh, it's a result of the mechanical properties of the frame, such as the motor to motor distance and so forth and so forth. And p-term oscillations will get stronger. For example, as you raise the throttle or as you do a sharp turn but they will generally be at the same frequency. Whereas we were seeing oscillations, or really not oscillations, because oscillation kind of infers a, or implies a regu that regularity. Right. We were seeing them kind of randomly, it was kind of irregular, right? Okay. And the other thing I saw is, so, the other, so then irregular oscillations could be kind of, could be D-term, because D-term amplifies noise, and if the noise is irregular, the D-term oscillations will be irregular. But D-term oscillations are usually much higher frequency and lower magnitude, and especially when you punch the throttle on the punch out, the magnitude got so big that really, it just screams motor vibration, and yeah. most likely, it's your props. Okay. So, because we, we know it's not your motors, and we don't, we, it's not your tune. Nothing that we saw there, even when you were going slowly, I was seeing the vibrations and they were really kind of irregular. And maybe those slow, low magnitude, irregular kind of twitches could be excess D gain. But then when you raise the throttle, what happened when you raise the throttle is not a tuning thing coming out. Perfect. So then if it's not your tune and it's not your motors, what does that leave? The most likely thing is it's your props. props. So okay. what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap your props out. Okay. We're gonna try it again with nothing changed except different props. And we're gonna see if it makes a difference. Okay. okay, that's what we're gonna do. And here we are flying with the King Kong 5040 props, which I know to be very well balanced. And you can judge for yourself whether things have changed, improved, or even gotten worse. Okay, so we flew it with the 5040 two blade props, which we know are, at least were, were. reasonably balanced. Yep. It did make a bit of difference, no, did it? It looked no. exactly the same. Yep. So I think we can conclude that it's not your props. Okay. Even though, I mean, I was inclined to believe these props are often not the best balanced props because they're heavier, they're thicker, they're harder to balance correctly from the factory. These these ones I know are well balanced. 
but it didn't change at all. Yeah. Okay, so then the next thing I think you should do is I think we should be looking at your camera. Okay. Because... Maybe the sensor... Maybe the sensor is loose inside. Yeah. So uh, we know we saw the vibrations a little bit in the high def cam, but that just means the vibrations are there. I wonder, you know what? Your camera is just friction fit here. Could it just be? It literally is, it, is. is it mostly up and down? Hold on. I thought it was. I think it's side by side too. Man, let me look at the footage. So that's what made you conclude it was probably y'all, right? Well. I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go. It could be anything. <laughs> Let me look at the footage again. So I have a theory that maybe what's happening is just that the camera is loose in its own mount and it's vibrating up and down. And so I've put some rubber tape here and I've just sort of affixed the camera so that it now is, it can't move. See? And a little zip tie around it. And we're going to see if that fixes the issue. That's too obvious not to check. And here's the footage with the camera restrained as shown. And again, you can make your own judgment as to whether it's better or worse. Uh, I think it should be pretty obvious, pretty obvious to me at the time anyway. Okay, so we restrained the camera yep. and that made it much, much, much worse. Much worse. So it does make me think that maybe we have a loose sensor in here. And when the camera is unable to move, it made the vibrations. We, yeah. We've affixed the camera to the frame more securely. So we're transmitting more vibration to the camera. And maybe you do have a loose actually, sensor actually in here. That. Yeah. Okay. So let's swap the camera out. Yes. That's the next thing we're going to okay. do. Yeah. So a minute ago, David came up and he said, is it supposed to do that? Can you hear that? Yeah, that's, that's not good. That's not good. Let's find out what's inside this little box of treats. Now, is the board loose? The board isn't loose. It doesn't seem to be. I'm going to take the lens off. Oh. That's, that's interesting. Where did it go? What was... That's weird. Hang on. What was loose? Was it just the back plate? No. Oh, there it is again. What's loose? Why does taking the lens off make it not happen? It's the board. I think it's the board itself. The sensor. Nothing is, nothing is loose on here. I think the board itself is loose, but why? Why is the board loose? I mean, that's... Yeah, it's the board itself. Well, that's certainly your issue. What if we were to get some hot glue and try to hot glue this sucker in? I think that's your issue. I think that's your issue. I don't know why this is not holding it firmly like it should. Is this damaged in some way? You see, we've got... Oh, no. We've got these little things here which are supposed to hold it down. But maybe they're just not doing what they're supposed to do. Let's, let's put some hot glue in here and see if that fixes it. And that'll save your camera. Yeah, so while we were waiting for the hot glue gun to heat up, David had a better idea, which is, what if we just put a little piece of foam in here? Um, this is, you know, we might make a mess of it with the hot glue. That's a good idea. Also, um, it's possible that the foam will compress over time and lose its pressure. So if the vibrations come back, you may need to go at it again. But I think this is a really good solution for the time being. And we'll just, we'll just set that down in there and we'll close this up. And we'll, uh, we'll have to refocus the lens because I took the lens off, but that's no big deal. And here's the footage flying with the piece of foam in the back of the camera. And I'll give, I'll give away the game. I won't make you guess. I think you can see it's way, way better. There's still a little bit of vibration when David goes to high throttle, which you're about to see here, right there. So this copter isn't flying perfect yet, uh, but we've made a huge improvement and we certainly have determined, we've determined why David's PID tuning changes weren't having any effect. It's because the problem wasn't being caused by PIDs. It was being caused by a loose camera board. Okay, so that that did solve it. Yeah, I think yep. so. Okay, great. Uh, we had a loose sensor. We still have some high frequency oscillation, not high frequency, high throttle oscillations, yep. uh, but they're they're more rhythmic. We're not seeing anything at mid or low throttle. So now we're in the realm of a tuning issue, which will be a subject for another video.
right. Bye, everybody. Joshua, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, it. David. Yeah, thanks. Nice, nice working with you. Thanks. Awesome.